Act the Second of Adelphi or the Brothers by Terence. Translated by Henry Thomas Riley. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act the Second. Scene One. Enter Iskinus and Parmeno with the music girl, followed by Sanio and a crowd of people i beseech you fellow citizens do give aid to a miserable and innocent man do assist the distressed iskinus to the girl be quiet and now then stand here just where you are why do you look back there's no danger he shall never touch you while i am here i'll have her in spite of all though he is a villain he'll not risk to-day getting a second beating hear me ashenus that you may not say that you were in ignorance of my calling i am a procurer i know it and of as high a character as any one ever was when you shall be excusing yourself by and by how that ye wish this injury had not been done me i shall not value it this snapping his fingers depend upon it i'll prosecute my rights and ye shall never pay with words for the evil that you have done me indeed i know these ways of yours i wish it hadn't happened i'll take my oath that you did not deserve this injustice while i myself have been treated in a disgraceful manner iskinus to parmeno go first with all dispatch and open the door parmeno opens the door but you will avail nothing by this iskinus to the girl now then step in Sanio coming between. But I'll not let her. Step this way, Pamino. You are gone too far that way. Here. Pointing. Stand close by him. There, that's what I want. Now then, take care you don't move your eyes in any direction from mine, that there may be no delay if I give you the sign, to your fist being instantly planted in his jaws. I'd have him then try that. Iskinus to Pamino now then observe me parmeno to sanio let go the woman strikes him oh scandalous deed he shall repeat it if you don't take care parmeno strikes him again oh shocking iskinus to parmeno i didn't give the sign but still make your mistakes on that side in preference now then go parmeno goes with the music girl into misio's house what is the meaning of this have you the sway here ashenus if i had it you should be exalted for your deserts what business have you with me none how then do you know who i am i don't want to have i touched anything of yours if you had touched it you'd have got a drubbing what greater right then have you to take my property for which i paid my money answer me that it were better for you not to be making a disturbance here before the house for if you persist in being impertinent you shall be dragged in at once and there you shall be lashed to death with whips a free man with whips so it shall be oh you shameless fellow is this the place where they say there is equal liberty for all if you have now raved enough procurer now then listen if you please why is it i that have been raving or you against me leave alone all that and come to the point what point where am i to come to are you willing now that i should say something that concerns you with all my heart only so it be something that's fair very fine a procurer wishing me not to say what's unfair i am a procurer i confess it 
the common bane of youth a perjurer a public nuisance still no injury has befallen you from me why faith that remains to come pray Ashenus, do come back to the point at which you set out you bought her for twenty minae and may your bargain never thrive that sum shall be given for her what if i don't choose to sell her to you will you compel me by no means i was afraid you would neither do i think that a woman can be sold who is free for i claim her by action of freedom now consider which you choose take the money or prepare yourself for the action think of it procure till i return he goes into the house of Mesio. scene two sanio alone oh supreme jupiter i do by no means wonder that men run mad through ill usage he has dragged me out of my house beaten me taken my property away against my will and has given me unfortunate wretch more than five hundred blows in return for all this ill usage he demands the girl to be made over to him for just the same price at which she was bought but however since he has so well deserved of me be it so he demands what is his due very well i consent then provided only he gives the money but i suspect this when i have said that i will sell her for so much he'll be getting witnesses forthwith that i have sold her as to getting the money it's all a dream call again by and by come back to-morrow i could bear with that too hard as it is if he would only pay it but i consider this to be the fact when you take up this trade you must brook and bear in silence the affronts of these young fellows however no one will pay me it's in vain for me to be reckoning upon that scene three and the cyrus from the house of mesio cyrus speaking to ischinus within say no more i myself will arrange with him i'll make him glad to take the money at once and say besides that he has been fairly dealt with addressing sanio sanio how is this that i hear you have been having some dispute or other with my master i never saw a dispute on more unequal terms than the one that has happened to-day between us i with being thumped he with beating me were both of us quite tired your own fault what could i do you ought to have yielded to the young man how could i more so when to-day i have even afforded my face to his blows well are you aware of what i tell you to slight money on some occasions is somewhat the surest gain what were you afraid you greatest simpleton alive if you had parted with ever so little of your right you had humoured the young man that he would not repay you with interest i do not pay ready money for hope then you'll never make a fortune get out with you sanio you don't know how to take in mankind i believe that to be the better plan but i was never so cunning as not whenever i was able to get it to prefer getting ready money come come i know your spirit 
as if twenty mine eye were anything at all to you in comparison to obliging him besides they say that you are setting out for cyprus senio aside ha huh. that you have been buying up many things to take thither and that the vessel is hired this i know your mind is in suspense however when you return thence i hope you'll settle the matter not a foot do i stir aside heavens i'm undone it was upon this hope they devised their project cyrus aside he is alarmed i've brought the fellow into a fix senio aside oh what villainy just look at that how he has nicked me in the very joint several women have been purchased and other things as well for me to take to cyprus if i don't get there to the fair my loss will be very great then if i postpone this business and settle it when i come back from there it will be of no use the matter will be quite forgotten come at last thou say why did you delay it where have you been so that i had better lose it altogether than either stay here so long or be suing for it then have you by this reckoned up what you calculate will be your profits is this honourable of him ought Ashenus to attempt this ought he to endeavour to take her away from me by downright violence cyrus aside he gives ground to senio i have this one proposal to make see if you fully approve of it rather than you should run the risk senio of getting or losing the whole halve it he will manage to scrape together ten mine eye from some quarter or other ah me unfortunate wretch i am now in danger of even losing part of the principal has he no shame he has loosened all my teeth my head too is full of bumps with his cuffs and would he defraud me as well i shall go nowhere just as you please have you anything more to say before i go why yes cyrus in faith i have this to request whatever the matters that are past rather than go to law let what is my own be returned for me at least cyrus the sum she cost me i know that you have not hitherto made trial of my friendship you will have no occasion to say that i am unmindful or ungrateful i'll do the best i can but i see tessifo he's in high spirits about his mistress what about what i was asking you stay a little scene four Enter Tessifo at the other side of the stage. From any man, when you stand in need of it, you are glad to receive a service. But of a truth, it is doubly acceptable. If he does you a kindness, who ought to do so? Oh, brother, brother, how can I sufficiently commend you? This I am quite sure of. I can never speak of you in such high terms, but that your deserts will surpass it for i am of opinion that i possess this one thing in especial beyond all others a brother than whom no individual is more highly endowed with the highest qualities oh tessifo oh cyrus where is eschinus why look he's at home waiting for you ha huh. what's the matter what's the matter tis through him cyrus that i am now alive generous creature has he not deemed everything of secondary importance to himself in comparison with my happiness the reproach the discredit 
my own amour and imprudence he has taken upon himself. There can be nothing beyond this. But what means that noise at the door? Stay, stay. Tis Eshinos himself coming out. Scene 5. Enter Ischinus from the house of Mesio. Where is that villain? Senio aside. He's looking for me. Is he bringing anything with him? Confusion. I don't see anything. Ischinus took Tessifo. Ha! Well met. You are the very man I was looking for. How goes it, Tessifo? All is safe. Away, then, with your melancholy. By my trot, I certainly will away with it when I have such a brother as you. Oh, my dear Eschinus, oh, my brother. Alas, I am unwilling to praise you any more to your face, lest you should think I do so rather for flattery than through gratitude. Go to, you simpleton. It is though we didn't by this time understand each other, Tessifo. This grieves me that we knew of it almost too late, and that the matter had come to such a pass that if all mankind had wished, they could not possibly have assisted you. I felt ashamed. Phew, that is folly, not shame, about such a trifling matter to be almost flying the country. It is shocking to be mentioned. I pray the gods may forbid it. I did wrong. Iskinus in a lower voice. What says Sanio to us at last? He is pacified at last. I'll go to the forum to pay him off. You, Tisifo, step indoors to her. Sanio aside to Cyrus. Cyrus, do urge the matter. Cyrus to Iskinus. Let us be off, for he is in haste to Cyprus. Not particularly so, although still I'm stopping here doing nothing at all. It shall be paid, don't fear. But he is to pay it all. He shall pay it all. Only hold your tongue and follow us this way. I'll follow. Ctesipho, as Cyrus is going. Harky, harky, Cyrus. Cyrus turning back. Well, now, what is it? Ctesipho, aside. Pray do discharge that most abominable fellow as soon as possible, for fear, in case he should become more angry, by some means or other, this matter should reach my father, and then I should be ruined for ever. That shall not am. Be of good heart. Meanwhile, enjoy yourself indoors with her, and on to the couches to be spread for us, and the other things to be got ready. As soon as this business is settled, I shall come home with the provisions. Pray do so. Since this has turned out so well, let us make a cheerful day of it. Ctesipho goes into the house of Mesio, and Exeunt, Iskinus, and Cyrus, followed by Sanio. End of Act Two